That's quite nice. Sailor's delight. Shepherd's delight. Yeah, bugger. Okay. Pretty shabby old state of affairs from the skipper today. Yeah. <laughs> Trees, I'm in trouble. Good times. <laughs> Honestly, we should have done that differently. And that fort is mine. We've done this passage before and it has a dubious honour of the last time Nick was seasick. So we're going to try not to repeat that experience. <sighs> well, I've had better sales, that's for bloody sure. So what reefing line are you putting in? Second one. Not the first one. To tell you the truth, the way the wind is around these parts, you need the first one, you can need the second one. It's probably true of anywhere. Yeah. Well, at least that's the way we sail. The thing is, the, a boat goes faster if it's reefed. And this is what people would seem to continually go on about, oh why did you know we don't need to reef, we got you know everything's going fine. But your boat's not sailing effectively. Every degree that you are healing increases your inefficiency. The most efficient point of sail is a boat being completely upright. The thing about this boat is that it, she has a very, very, very big mainsail. Because the self-tacking jib is such a, a thing that people want, that, you know, that what's happened is that the, the, the position of the mast has come forward. Bringing the mast forward means that you, you, allow, you can get a nice self-tacking jib in. The problem is that that's inefficient. It's only 95%. A self tack and jib cannot be more than about 95%. And you can get 97%, but essentially, you know, you do have to have, you, you know, the, the point at which you attach um, your sheet has to be in front of the mast, which means that if you want to drive the boat, you have to have a big main. All right. So, one, two, three. So it goes there, now, which is up. Good. All right, second reef is in. Third and first we'll put in next time we haven't got like a squall approaching. All right, so that's all done then? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to take you through um, our passage plan for tomorrow. So we are in Sardalone at the moment. And tomorrow we are going to Il Dieu. 27 miles and um, fairly straightforward. We've done this passage before and it has a dubious honour of the last time Nick was seasick. So we're going to try not to repeat that experience. So a couple of things, we need to be aware of uh, the tides or the tidal flow. And uh, really we need to leave Sardalone at about five hours before high water to get um, some favourable tide. So high water is high water breast. So high water is 1.24 a.m. And five hours after is 2.24, 3.24, 4.24, 5.24. <laughs> One plus five, 6.24. <laughs> so we need to be gone at about 6.24, exactly. That'll be seven hours. Yeah. Um, and that will give us about three hours of favorable tide. And then it will start to turn and um, then it will actually um, become foul tide uh, at about the high water breast mark or about two, two hours before high water breast tomorrow. So that will be, if we can get in before 12 p.m. then we won't, uh, we shouldn't come up against any foul tide. So that is the aim for tomorrow. So eight o'clock tomorrow morning, we should be getting southwesterlies at 15 knots, um, gusting up to around 24. So yeah, we might need to use that. We might need to put that second reef in. So we'll see. I don't know whether tomorrow's gonna be like the most pleasant sail that we've ever done, Nick. What makes you say that though? Because it's gonna be gray and rainy and probably what's quite the, cold. 1.5 every, five yeah, no. with a six second interval. It's gonna be a bit lumpy. It's gonna be a bit, lumpy. It's gonna be a bit rainy. 
Lumpy, rainy, I hope it's not spewy. Yeah. Monday and Tuesday are the only days where there's any south in the wind. And then as of Tuesday evening, it's just westerlies. And then, yeah, as of Wednesday, there's actually north in the wind and it's northwesterlies. Forever and ever. Like literally, there's north in the wind until for the rest of the forecast. So we, we literally leave either tomorrow or Tuesday. And I don't think there's any point in leaving it till Tuesday because what if the forecast changes? What do you think, Nick? Yeah, no, we leave tomorrow. As I said, there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, if we get out there and it's horrible, we can't go anywhere. There's a port like 15 miles away. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we'd have to be pretty desperate to do that, but yeah, we can. Well, and last time I was spewing in my ring or, you know, all over the place and we still made it till the year. But anyway, hopefully that that's not the case again tomorrow. Oh, my Quite a nice evening out here now the rain's finally passed. Well, I'm kind of hoping that this is the end of it. Is this well, the end of it? You, you can, no. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm afraid not. But this is the end of the is this the end of the front or is it just another it can't be there can't be three fronts. Can there? Well, I don't know. I know that there's showers tomorrow. The showers, but the showers. It's not like crazy. Not like it was today. Or is it the same as today? I think it's the same as today. No, it was heavy today. There was like two mil and then one mil and it's like down to point three. Tell me we're going to have a better day sailing. I can't make that promise. Mm. I can promise you. Where are you? And I'm here, just, just mooching about <laughs> behind you. Like the hunchback of Notre What's up, Nick? I can promise you. Where I can't keep an eye on you. This makes me nervous. You mind me? Oh, yes. I can promise you that tomorrow afternoon, this time tomorrow, we are going to be in Ilja and we are going to be looking around and it is going to be lovely. Get your hands out of my pants. We like Ildia. We love Ildia and on Tuesday we're going to go for a lovely cycle ride and explore. Like it might be lovely. It might be a great sale. It might be one of the best sales of the year. Could be one of the best sales of the entire year tomorrow. The, for the forecast isn't always right, especially when it comes to rain. I mean, yeah, the sun's not even due to make an appearance until two o'clock. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be grey and drizzly. A bit like you. I'm not grey and drizzly. You're grey and grizzly. Oh yeah. <laughs> the sunset just keeps getting crazier by the second. I keep going inside and thinking, oh, that's done now. And then I look out the window, I'm like, that's insane. How nice is the sunset? That's great night. Sailor's Delight? Shepherd's Delight. Oh, bugger. The sheep involved in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, gorgeous. Wow, bloody hell, I hadn't seen all that out there. I know, that's, it only just appeared. The apocalypse. It wasn't there a minute ago. No, we've already had that this year. When I barely had left the shore. Good morning. We are about to head off. It's 10 o'clock, <laughs> not 6.30 as we had originally planned. We got up at 6.30 and, well Nick got up at 6.30 and um, it was absolutely torrential and he turned around and came back into, the bed, into bed again. So um, we, yeah, decided to just leave it and see what the weather did. We had another look at the tides and we will be punching a little bit of tide by leaving later, but it's neeps at the moment. so. It should only be between kind of 0.2 and 0.5 of a knot and we would rather that than um, sailing in the rain all day. We can see that even though there's a little bit more to come, like the worst is hopefully pass us by. So 27 miles to Ildia. Let's do this.
I can see a little bit of blue sky. Hopefully that continues. <sighs> it's a good feeling to be on the move again. We've been here for a week and uh, yeah, I just, I just love moving on to the, a new place. Somewhere that I have been before, somewhere that I haven't been before. Either way, I just love, uh, love being on the move. Good times. <laughs> well, I've had better sales, that's for bloody sure. Well, we're on course now. <clears throat> sales are up, we're doing about seven knots. We've got 18 miles until we are in the lee of Ildigu, and at that point, um, the swell will definitely calm down a lot. I know that from experience, we've done this before. And uh, yeah, so another couple of hours and three hours and uh, things will start to come down a little bit. But you know, we've got what, 14 knots, four to the beam. So, and we've got, I don't know, well, it's apparently one and a half meter swell. That was the forecast for today. So it's a little bit of a bumpy ride. Nick's not feeling amazing about to go over a big wave and down <laughs> up down um, but yeah anyway um, once we're there then uh, we'll be good so another few hours and this will all be behind us In the lee of the land, and it is much more settled here. The um, swell is well, the sea state is much flatter, and um, yeah, it feels feels nice actually. Relatively pleasant at the moment. The sun's come out, got a beautiful beach behind me. We are only a few miles away from the marina. How's our skipper going? Skipper's been today. Oh man, I hate seasickness. Yeah. You've been looking a bit green. Yeah, I felt pretty green. At least I kept my breakfast down. Yeah, it looked like a pretty close pool there for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Believe me, it was close. I'm like, oh, I'm going to start again. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Yeah, well, it's like a pretty shabby old state of affairs for the skipper today. Well, Nick's come to life. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was particularly pleasant for him. Um, but anyway, that's just what happens sometimes. 
and uh, it's over now. We are here in Gulia. It is a beautiful island, and we are about a mile away from the marina. So we've raided them. They told us to come in, tie up. Then it's uh, time to settle in for the afternoon. Get the boat all cleaned and sorted out. Get ourselves cleaned and sorted out. And then this evening, I think we'll be going out for a well and drink. Yep. yep. Go in? Yeah, so you come around here. So this big breakwater here, yeah. you, you hug it, you, you keep it to, to port, yeah? yeah. I'm going to try and spin around. Yeah. Try. So get ready for like a lot of hullabaloo. I am. Trees, I'm in trouble. You're a fender there? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to do this. I'm getting blown off. So you've got to get, get over the side. That's it. Trees are going to lose steerage. Can you haul it in? That's it. Honestly, we should have done that differently. And that fault is mine. I should have reversed onto this pontoon, not tried to spin around 180. All right, well, listen, I am going to, I've got to go and check in. All right. Whew. Okay. Couple of takeaways. <laughs> um, yeah, I bet you guys were all watching that going, oh God, like, I wouldn't have done that. And actually, from your vantage point, I'm yet to see the footage, but you wouldn't have been able to see how close the bow was to the um, the pontoon. So yeah, that probably uh, would have made it a little bit more difficult for you to appreciate what was going on. What we need to do is what we do all the time um, when um, the passage doesn't go according to plan is work out why it didn't go to plan and try and learn from try and learn from the next time. Yeah, that's just good practice, and I don't want to do it because we're both tired. All right, um, I'll tell you what I think went wrong, and you tell me what you would think went wrong. Okay. We shouldn't have left. That was the conditions were not right for leaving. I knew that we shouldn't have left, um, and I also understand that we're waiting for a weather window, and as such, sailors around the world deal with this. They have to go, well, the weather's not right, but. And of all the things, it wasn't the wind strength, it wasn't the, it wasn't the wind direction, it was the swell period. Yeah. And I knew that a six second swell period would screw me up. I, normally 10 to 12, you're fine with it. 
but it's the one thing that makes you seasick with the soil period and I'm like six seconds that's going to be rough and it was shitty and sloppy out there so that's the first thing so going on a six second soil period was not brilliant the other thing again it's my fault I was indecisive this morning I got up at six o'clock looked out the window said it's pissing with rain and went back to bed and said we're not going today got up again at eight o'clock had a coffee and a, and a pastry and said oh let's go and as such I hadn't eaten so I didn't have a full breakfast which always makes me seasick and I drank coffee which makes me seasick so that basically meant that I was pretty redundant for most of the journey so that was that was that on passage just a couple of things I do know the 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 windward shroud to two slacks so I've got to do some I've got to tune that rig a little bit there's <coughs> far too much play sorry in the leeward leeward shrouds mm. the leeward shroud to two slack there's far too much play in them and I'm not happy with the way the genoa is set so I need to play around with that yeah I felt like there was it's like the um, the jib halyard needed tightening. Like, tightening I think it's a couple of things I, firstly I need to play with the backstay tension Right, I've got to get some. I've got to get some pre-bend in that mask. Mast. Mast. So yeah, it's pretty straight at the moment. So I'm probably going to get onto the backstay and crank that back a little bit. Okay. And that will flatten the jib slightly. I also need to play with the halyard tension, and I also need to position. There's like in the in the clue board. There's like eight holes or six holes. I need yeah. to move it down a little bit to just get a little bit more kind of downward pull on the Yeah, thing. I noticed that you had it in the top one. Yeah, which is that, it was literally good. just when I, I, we put it on so quickly, I didn't do it. You didn't so, it. Um, so yeah, looking at the rig, it needs a little bit of a tune. Um, and then coming in, I mean, literally we've made a nick in the, a nick probably the size of, I don't know, a grain of rice. It's, it's tiny, it's just a scuff mark which will polish out. But. Again, that is my fault. I came into a narrow, a narrow pontoon, and that you know the narrow fairway, which was probably only about 15 meters, where the wind is blowing you off, and tried to turn a 12 meter boat around. Yeah, I have to admit, I was feeling a bit nervous when you said that. Yeah, do that. because we've got no prop walk here, so if I had a single rudder, I could have literally just flipped the back end, but we don't have prop walk, so yeah. we have to rely completely on the bow thruster, which is not powerful enough. It's not when um, it's against the wind. Yeah, absolutely. So We've had that so many times before. Yeah, and that again is poor, poor judgment on my part. I should have assessed it better. Well, it, it literally... the, problem, the problem is that coming into this marina, you don't have any eyes on the pontoon that you're about to tie up to until like you're literally yeah. on top of the pontoon so you know like we could have the, because we know this know. boat well you always reverse it in when you can always reverse it in because she just she, she just goes so much better in reverse um to kind of get her onto moorings yeah well i wasn't without error it's all right look no fish no fowl literally it's a little bit of wet dry and maybe like a, a, a rice grain size amount of gel coat polished out you know that's fine but look you know what so that's what we did wrong overall the boat went bloody well today well that's what i was thinking no we're you know, pissing on that eight knots yeah and like she handled it so well yeah she, she, she handles it but this is the thing about this boat and i've said this about i was talking to someone on our well no. karen talking i'll make tea I was on someone on our WhatsApp group about this, about, you know, do you buy a 32 foot light displacement boat for serious offshore cruising? Can you ask me um, a mark? Yeah. And clearly you don't. No. Because, you know, the, this boat is so, you know, well ballasted with the keel and the keel plate. She just, she just sits in the water. Yeah. But we're still, you are still going along at eight knots. Yeah. And that was with a dirty hull up, although the hull's probably less dirty now. But yeah, and the sail sh the sail trim's not optimised because the uh, the you know I need yeah, to. Yeah, the sail trim was rubbish today. I kept on, I didn't want to like film the sails because yeah. they looked so bad. Well, from here on in, from Ile de Year, literally we can. Even if there's northwest, we could just do 15 miles, 15 Look, miles. The reason why we were desperate to get to Ildia is because this is a good jumping point for lots of other places to cruise. Depending on, yes. Irrespective of the wind direction. So yes. from here, as long as the wind isn't coming directly from the north, yep. if there's a bit of west in it, we can go east. If there's a bit of east in it, we can go west. If we get a rare southerly, we can bez up to Belil. Cheers. Cheers. 
Do I get a little kiss or are you too sick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Goodbye. Thank you for watching that episode. <laughs>I feel that we're settling into our season. This is looking quite promising. Suddenly, instead of leaves underfoot, I have sand underfoot. The tide's coming in quickly. I'm scared, okay. Oh, you're gonna get wet. Go, there you go, let me do it. No, no, you go that way. How magnificent. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Every low and every high. And I would have you anyway, dear Any way your heart could bear